So we got a question here from our buddy who wishes to re remain nameless, so he will get the alias of what else but Bob. Bob says that he's been doing jiu-jitsu and he's lost a lot of weight. He's lost 50 pounds already. And he says he's still not totally comfortable with himself because you know he's a bigger guy. He's a heavier guy and he's trying to lose some weight. Not feeling too good yet. And he says that he's been doing some local competitions, but they kind of suck because there's not very many opponents and he just doesn't have the feel that he wants. But he, and he wants to do some of these big competitions. But the thing about the big competitions that he wants to do that look really fun, that re look really engaging, is that they don't let him wear a rash guard underneath his gi. So he says that at the local tournaments, they'll let him wear a rash guard, but at the big ones, they won't. And so he's wondering kind of what to do because he doesn't feel very comfortable having his bare skin showing under his gi at a tournament where it's probably going to become unwrapped. Um, but he really wants to do the tournament, right? So he's wondering what my advice would be. So first off, Bob, thanks for the question, dude. And I picked this question right when I saw it. I was like, man, I got to answer this one. And the reason being is because I know the feeling, dude. Like I was there. Like when I was, I've shared this story before, when I was in seventh grade, man, I got jumped and I got my nose broken, I got hit with a bat, I was 12 years old, they were 16, they were 18 years old, they beat the piss out of me. Right in front of my house too, when I was walking home from, from middle school. And that event took me from being this athletic kid who was riding his bike and running, I used to run laps for fun, doing all these things, and then I became this really reclusive kid who, and not to mention not just athletic, but I was outgoing and really just all over the place, right? I went from being this, from that to this reclusive kid who just wanted to sit at home and I used to eat food just because I didn't know what else to do and play video games, watch TV and just sit and do nothing. And I even became so unconfident in just speaking to people that I started to d d develop a st stutter because I was so like nervous around people when I would speak. And by the time like I got to middle, like to high school, right? Like I was probably at my fluffiest. I was about 235 or so and about 5'9". I was a chunky kid and I had gone through this like like fattening up process while I was going through puberty and I developed man boobs, right? They were pretty pronounced man boobs. Like I had some some serious hooters when I was a, a freshman in high school and, and up into through the middle of my high school. It was it was something that really bothered me. What made it worse was that one of my family members, like right, one of my family members, I was sitting around the house one day and one of my family members came up to me. I was about 13 or 14 at the time and they, they looked at me and they said, man, you've got some tits on you. And as soon as they said that, like I never really, I, I didn't care, I never really thought about it, but as soon as they said that, I tucked my hands over top of my, my, my chest, I went and put a shirt on, and no one saw me without my shirt off, chest-wise, until I was like 20 years old. Right, like when we were in like high school wrestling practices or football re uh, practices, whatever, I would always turn away anytime I had to take like my clothes off, right? I would take my shirt off, and then put stuff on, but always turned away. I never let anybody see me straight on. And when I was wrestling in high school, that was a big problem I had because we had that singlet on, which is basically like a big spandex onesie, and I was always worried about my chest popping out, right? And my, and my body was kind of chubby, so I didn't feel very comfortable in it. Um, the one thing I will say is that when I was competing, I didn't give two shits about it, right? I, it, was, it was the last thing on my mind. So don't worry that your appearance is gonna distract you, because that's not gonna happen. When you're in there during the fight, you're gonna be fighting. But I do want to give you some advice on this just because, again, it's sort of to move forward. So the thing that really might seem surprising, though, is that as I got through high school, I ended up losing a lot of weight. I ended up getting down to where I had abdominal muscles showing, right? I was in high school and I had, like, abs showing. The funny thing was, though, I still didn't take my shirt off in front of anybody. I Like, people would tell me, man, you look jacked, you look muscular, you look this, that, whatever. But still, take my shirt off like that. Right, even with like girls that would hang out with me, I still was like always trying not to let them see my chest. Even though they would see it eventually, they didn't care, but I was still trying to cover myself up. And I'm saying this because you're losing a bunch of weight, man, and the thing is, is like you're physically changing, but the mental stuff, that's deep psychological stuff, dude. And there's obviously something that's happened in your, your lifespan that's made you feel shamed about the way that you look, right? whether it be through just media or be through like in my situation where I had family members telling me I had titties, right? I don't know what it is. It's deep psychological stuff. And it takes a lot of time for that to sort of like unlock and let go, right? Because it, it has a grip on your brain. And so 
the reason I'm getting into this is because again, I changed to the point where I had like abdominal muscles showing. I was in great shape, but I still didn't feel comfortable because physically I had changed into someone who was in great shape and, and, and looked good with her shirt off, but mentally I had not wrapped my brain around it and I had not let go of that person that I used to be, right? I hadn't let go of my fat self, my, my chubby self. I still felt like the same person, that same insecure kid. I still felt like the same person. And so my advice, because I don't have, um, and I'm sorry to say this, I don't have any like good advice, right? Like some good one-liner that I can give you in this video, other than you simply have to basically beat this thing out of you, right? Because you feel ashamed for some reason, which is, it's unfortunate, because there's nothing wrong with you, right? Like you're, you're a chubby guy, right? Whatever, right? There's lots of chubby people. I know all kinds of chubby people. Don't care, right? And you're working towards losing it, right? Which is, you know, in, in the long term health, that's good, right? And you're working towards, you know, the goal that you have as far as looking the way you want to look. But the problem is, you got to understand this is even when you get to that point, even when you look the way that you thought you wanted to look, you're still not going to be satisfied until you let go of whoever it is that you think you are, whoever you used to be, that insecure person. And the best way, man, and I share this from personal experience, the best way to get over this is to do all the stuff that makes you uncomfortable. Do whatever it is that you like feel uncomfortable doing without your shirt off and go do that, right? For me, it was like doing like, I remember sometimes in nogi sessions, right? Everybody would take their shirt off, right? Because it, you know it was back then, and there wasn't really a, a you know normal gym, so everybody would take their shirts off and train with like just shorts on. And I remember, man, like doing that for the first day, took my shirt off, and I'm like standing around and seeing if anybody's noticing. No one said a word. And we started rolling. It was so much fun. I was like, I felt liberated, right? And then so then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to like a pool, right? Because I felt I couldn't go to pools, man. Like I, I didn't want to go swim with people because I'd like like have to walk around like this the whole time. Or I'd try to swim and look with my shirt on, which looked I mean, that made me look like a goofball, because then I'm trying to swim with my shirt on, which only brings attention to you're you're un you're, you're uncomfortable with yourself. So I remember going to the pool, taking my shirt off, and like walking around and being like, okay, right. Then I went for a run down the like in like down our um, down through the city, right, and through a park with my shirt off, right. It's a hot summer day, so I'm running around. So again, I did all these things, and I started to really have fun with it because it was like. Every time I did it, I became a little bit more emboldened. It became a little bit stronger because I was like, I'm not so bad after all, right? It's not that bad. So. <laughs> Bob, I'm getting, all, I'm getting out in the weeds, man. Um, so m my advice to you, brother, is simply just whatever it is that you're uncomfortable to do, like the tournament, right, or like anything else that you can think of because of your physical appearance, go do it. Just go do it, right? And, and first off, you're going to realize that it, it's, dude, the fear of the thing is always worse than what it actually is, right? We always build these little things up into something that they're not, but again, I promise you it's not going to end up like you think it is, right? And again, at a, especially at a jiu-jitsu tournament, there's plenty of heavier set guys. Nobody's gonna care, okay? Nobody's worried about you. They're worried about their own competition. And you said in your message you're worried about maybe you're not gonna be focused 100% on the match because your appearance, trust me, brother. When you get out there to go 100% with another human being, your appearance, your, your fluff on your body is gonna be the last thing you're gonna be concerned with. So, Bob, I'm done with this video. I hope this helps, dude. Good luck in, uh, in your competitions and good luck overcoming this sort of mental hurdle that you have. Thanks, dude.